Hi there, um, my, my name is Christina Kelly and I'm the named contact person for student carers at Glasgow Caledonian University. Uh, this is Carers Week, which is an annual campaign to raise awareness of caring and highlight some of the challenges carers face and also recognise the contributions that they make to their families and communities. Uh, today I'll be speaking to Jenny McNabb from Carers of Western Bartonshire. As part of my role in supporting student carers, we work in partnership with local carers organisations and that helps us to appropriately signpost students to external sources of support and carers organisations are also very helpful to us in terms of raising awareness and um, helping kind of increase visibility of caring. Um, so Jenny was a former student at GCU, so we'll be hearing a little bit about that as well. So it might be quite interesting for anybody considering studying at GCU to, to hear Jenny's experiences of that. And although we'll be talking about our specific organisations today, um, it's maybe worth saying that the kind of support that we offer is, is broadly similar to the kind of support that you'll find wherever you, you live or study. Um, so I'll just kind of start off by asking Jenny how she's doing today and how Carers Week's been going and what's been happening. Yeah, I'm fine today. Um, Carers Week's been great for us. We have an action-packed week planned for all our registered carers. Um, so yesterday we had our first event, which was a virtual cream tea. Um, we normally have a Carers Elevensies that happens on a Tuesday, but um, for Carers Week we thought we'd make it a little bit more interesting. Um, so we had between 20 and 30 carers attend online um, and mm -hmm. they all were delivered a cream tea pack with a scone, sandwiches, um, clotted cream, all that sort of stuff. Um, and it was just a good way to get everybody to catch up with one another. Um, you'll find a picture of it on our Facebook page. Um, everybody had a great time and um, we've had some lovely feedback this morning. Um, we have a dance class on Friday afternoon. We have a craft session tomorrow night. Um, so yeah, everybody's been really looking forward to everything that we've got planned. Oh, nice. I think I saw that on Twitter actually, your, your cream tea. So yeah. I, I didn't realise everybody got treats in the post. That sounds lovely. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's really nice that you do those kind of social things as well. Because I think um, isolation can be a big thing for carers. So um, yeah, that's definitely. nice that you, you offer those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I guess you, met, you touched on the sorts of things you normally do, but um, could you tell us a wee bit more about kind of what carers of Western Bartonshire do what kind of services they provide for carers? Yeah, yeah. So we are um, an independent organisation um, based in Western Bartonshire. So that takes in the areas of Clydebank, Dalmuir, all the way through to Balloch and Gartaharan. Um, and we look after unpaid carers. Um, and for anybody who doesn't know, an unpaid carer is somebody who is looking after a loved one, whether it be a family member, a friend, a neighbour. Um, for a whole variety of different conditions. Um, it could be an addiction, it could be because they are frail or elderly, they may have a learning disability or a physical disability, um, or it could be mental illness. Um, so what we do is we provide a support service to those carers. Um, they can come to us for anything between um, just wanting a chat about things, if things are getting a bit difficult, or we can put in more long-term um, support, such as short breaks, respite, replacement care, that sort of thing. Um, we normally have support groups, but right now everything's been moved online. Um, but we are very big on bringing carers together. Um, we we realise that speaking to people who are in similar situations as yourself can be really beneficial. Um, so we have loads of different support groups um, and support groups that are quite specific to different situations. Um, for example, we have our search project that's open to carers who are either um, living with an alcohol problem themselves or um, are caring for somebody with an alcohol addiction. Um, and we know that carers who have attended this group and like many others have found it really beneficial to speak to somebody who is dealing with really similar situations, you know, the same challenges day in, day out. Because um, like you said earlier, it can be quite isolating to be a carer. Um, so knowing that you're not the only one and there are people out there who get it can be really helpful. Um, mm -hmm. These support groups normally lead to quite a lot of different events and activities. In normal times, we would try and get away with our carers. Um, we go away days and overnights you know, all around the country. Um, and this is normally pretty exciting for our carers because not only does it bring them together, it gives them a wee bit of respite as well. Um, we can help carers in a number of different ways. Um, we can help them with benefits. Um, grants, um, we can put them in touch with local services, 
we can act as the middleman um, if you're having difficulty arranging specific services, um, such as home care or replacement care. Um, but yeah, in, anything that carers need in the local area, really, we're at really point of contact if you need any support. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a really kind of wide range of supports and it sounds really helpful. Um, are, are there any other kind of things that, that carers might kind of uh, seek help with? Any, anything around kind of carers' rights that they might look for from a carers' organisation? Yeah, absolutely. So as an unpaid carer, you are recognised by law under the Carers Act. Um, so under the Carers Act, you're entitled to certain things. Um, a perfect example of this would be if the cared for you're looking after um, goes into hospital or they're being discharged from hospital. As a carer, you have a right to be involved in that process and those conversations. Um, we have a dedicated team of carer support workers here at the Carer Centre, um, one of which is a, is a specialist in hospital discharge. Um, so if you need a, some support if somebody's in hospital or you're not quite sure how to get those lines of conversation open, um, we're available to help you do that and keep you in contact with the hospital and doctors, nurses, anybody who's involved in that mm -hmm. process. And that that's right up until they get home as well. If you know if you're looking after somebody who inevitably needs some sort of equipment or they need um, home care to come in um, certain times throughout the week, um, we're with you throughout that entire process. Um, it's really whatever you need, we're there for you. Um, mm -hmm. And the Carers Act covers a lot of different things. You know, um, it's not just the right to be involved in hospital conversations and um, you have the right to ask for flexible working as well just to make sure you've mm -hmm. got time to you know both work and care for the person that you're looking after and um, anything under the carers act you, you can find on our website um, mm -hmm. and if you have any questions or you're trying to access a certain part of what you're entitled to um, and you're maybe struggling or don't know how to go about it um, you can contact the, your local carer centre and if you're in Western Banshire contact us. Yeah, no, that's that's all really interesting in terms of um, well, we've been doing a wee bit of work um, during Carers Week around our support for for staff carers. Um, mm -hmm. There's a podcast came out yesterday and a video as well with uh, kind of shining a spotlight on some of our staff carers and the kind of flexible work and they've they've found. And also, when you mentioned the the hospital discharge, obviously we work with um, healthcare uh, future healthcare professionals who are studying, mm -hmm. some future nurses, social workers, occupational therapists. So, you know, I think there's a really good link there for them to be maybe like learning from the, the work that the carers organisations are doing yeah. there and that there could be some, some good links to maybe make there in, in future. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess uh, moving on, I think we we're going to talk a wee bit about, I think I've been having a look on your web page actually and there's some really nice activities on there. Um, working yeah. in the student wellbeing service myself, I was quite interested in, in all the kind of wellbeing activities you offer and wondered mm -hmm. if you wanted to talk a wee bit more about, about them. Yeah, um, so... Um, stress management and well-being are a really big important um, aspect to us um, we have a few things involved in that that carers can get involved in uh, we host yoga classes and um, we have a yoga teacher who um, takes classes every Monday and Thursday um, right now it's online but hopefully she can get back to doing it in person soon um, and again we've had really great feedback from that and um, really help you know keeps you calm and um, really kind of promotes mindfulness that sort of thing and um, we also have our moving and assistant training and um, which also encompasses things like mindfulness reiki and um, things just to kind of help you manage stress um, on our our website's undergoing a bit of construction at the moment but the stress management page will eventually detail the process if you want to access those things um, and they include things like we can um, offer colouring packs, um, sticker packs, um, a stress management CD with relaxing music, um, those sort of things. And recently what we've started offering is CBT. Um, we have a great counsellor involved with us um, and we've had a couple of carers attend that. And again, we've they've seen massive differences in their stress management, how they're dealing with day-to-day -day challenges. Um, so she's, a, she's available if you contact your carer support worker or contact us. Um, to register um, if if the care support worker feels that's something you would benefit from they'll absolutely tell you about it and put you in contact with her. Mm. Yeah, these all sound like really beneficial things for carers who do experience a lot of stress and anxiety and worry yeah. Um, yeah. I can see I can see these things being really helpful to them um, a yeah. lot of student carers I talk to mentioned that 
that time's quite a big barrier for them to, to engage in with a carer service in the first place. And just wondered what, what your experience of kind of barriers are, if, if there's any other kind of barriers you can think of that maybe prevent carers from engaging with services like yours. Yeah, I think time. I think time's a big one um, for all carers. I think yeah. um, I understand student carers probably more so if they're trying to juggle, you know, education and stuff as well. Um, but we have heard before from older carers as well that, you know, as as the cared for gets older, um, things become more difficult and that may stop them engaging. I think particularly for young people, um, it might be a bit intimidating reaching out to a, um, a carer centre or a support service. Um, primarily because I think maybe it's seen as an older person service a lot of the time. Um, we, are, we are very aware that we are trying to branch out more to young adult carers. Um, we actually look after carers 18 plus. Um, so anybody who is a younger adult carer, um, we're very keen to get more involved with um, and encourage them to register if they need support. Um, but I can understand that might be quite difficult, um, not just in terms of time, but maybe if you think you're too young to join, um, or you think that there's maybe nothing you can get involved in, um, services aren't really accessible to you, um, they absolutely are. Um, all you need to do is get in contact and we're there to support you no matter what age you are. Um, mm -hmm. In Western Bartonshire, there is a young carer service um, and they would look after young carers um, below the age of 18. So we're, there's really a transitional period um, mm -hmm. between when someone leaves there and comes to us and we understand that might be a little bit difficult sometimes you know it's a new set of faces you know it's it, you're not used to the services that we provide um, but we're always there we're always available um, and it is just a case of picking up the phone and getting in contact and we are more than happy to find ways of putting you in contact with other carers if that's what would if that's what would help um, we're in the process of trying to establish a young adult carers group, actually. We have our first event on Saturday, um, which mm -hmm. is a young adult carers lunch, and hopefully that'll be the first of quite a few events. Um, we know that the young adult carers that we do have are really keen to um, get involved with one another and with the service more. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully that'll be a, a gateway to new carers wanting to register. Yeah, that sounds really positive. Um, I know our student carer rep that we have at the university at the moment is, is a member of a, a young um, young adult carers group as mm -hmm. well, um, quite yeah. involved with it, with a lot of work they do. So yeah, and, yeah I think really enjoys that. So, yeah. um, and I guess we could talk a wee bit about going back to, to when you were a student at GCU, kind of how, how, yeah, yeah. how was that experience? Would you have any advice for anyone who's thinking about coming to study at GCU? Um, I would say do it, <laughs> I think. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I I was swaying when I was applying for university about what uni I would actually go to. Um, mm -hmm. And I suppose the thing that helped sway my opinion was how specific a course I wanted to do. Um, I knew that I wanted to do something in marketing. Um, but when I saw fashion branding, I was actually quite surprised that it could be that specific and that tailored. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew I wanted it instantly. Um, and when I actually started studying at GCU, I realised how interactive and practical the course is. It's not, mm -hmm. um, it's, I don't think GCU does things in the really traditional mundane way. I think mm -hmm. that GCU are really quite innovative. And the, the stuff that I really appreciated during my time were the things like live projects, you know, getting involved and out there and speaking to people, guest speakers, you know, and really, really those are the things that will help you get into employment and do the thing that you want to do at the end of the day is having those contacts and that experience. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, it, there was a really nice balance between how much, you know, homework and essays and stuff you did to actually getting out there and getting a taste of what it's really like. Um, I think it was it was a really good live example for the four years I was there. Um, mm. And the, the staff and tutors are just great. You know, they're so helpful. Um, I, I don't, I've never had a bad experience at GCU. Um, it, was, it was fantastic. And I say, if, um, if anybody's even mildly thinking about it, you're thinking in the right direction. <laughs> um, I think you, you, you would have a great time and make the most of being there. I'm sure that would be good good news for anyone who's who's hoping to come and study at GCU next. Um, and I understand that we, we talked a wee bit about it before when you mentioned you were volunteering with Carers of Western Bartonshire at the same time as you were studying. Yeah. And I'm just thinking about any students who might be thinking about 
you know, working with a carers organisation or, or volunteering with a carers organisation. Maybe um, if you could talk a wee bit about how that, how that helped you as a student and then how it's helped you as a graduate as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so being from Western Berkshire myself, I was always aware of the organisation. They have quite a strong place in the community. Um, and obviously because of the live projects that were being presented to us at university, um, it was kind of just a natural link to, you know, get in contact with somebody that you knew and, you know, you were familiar with the work that they did and, and kind of go hand in hand. So there were a couple of events um, or assessments during university where you, you know, you were encouraged to reach out to a, you know, a charity or a business and work with them. Um, and they were my first thought throughout quite a lot of that. Um, we did do an assessment um, where we held a kind of reminiscence day for carers and the people that they look after, um, which was a kind of fashion through the ages morning. Um, and we know we got really good feedback from that, from the carers and the people that they were looking after. It took, kind of really took them down memory lane. And um, we kind of done up the room with all, you know, all different costumes and pictures and things like that. Um, and because of that, what it actually led me to doing was volunteering with the organisation. Um, mm -hmm. One of the key things that I helped out with was every year um, we hold a fundraising event. Um, we've not been able to, obviously, due to the pandemic, but um, in recent years, we've, we hold a major fundraising event and we wanted to try and do something really out, outside the box a couple of years ago. Um, so um, I was asked to volunteer and help out and what we came up with was a fashion show based around, um, fashion, it was called Fashion on a Budget, but it was essentially the theme was show highlighting financial struggles of carers but also highlighting that um you don't have to be spending loads and loads of money to look fashionable or wear the things that you want to wear so we had 10 models each model had two outfits and um, all our models were registered carers with us um, and what their outfits were made up of charity shop finds second hand finds um, discount shop finds um, donations, you know, things things that really didn't cost very much. And we were able to dress um, those models, so 20 outfits for under £200. Um, they were, we put on a big fashion show one night and um, we had people sponsor all our tables. Um, and at the end of the night, those outfits were actually put up for sale. And I think we were only left with one at the end of the night. Um, everybody was so keen to buy them and find out where we got them. And it came as a real shock to people how little it cost and where everything had came from. Um, I think people were really surprised to hear that things had come out of charity shops or, you know, clearing sections of shops that you maybe wouldn't think twice about. Um, mm. And it, it really went hand in hand with what I was doing at university as well. You know, I was able to take the things I was learning in, in a lecture theatre and in a seminar into an organisation who were just trying to think outside the box. So it was kind of like teaching in both ways, really. You know, I was learning more about the carers as I worked with them and how the organisation works, but they were also learning about the things that I was doing at university. Um, mm -hmm. So they, they went really nicely hand in hand. And in terms of personal benefits, it, it boosts your confidence so much to know that somebody wants to wants to know what you're learning about and put that into action. Um, mm -hmm. And to be able to help a lo local organisation who you never know you might need one day. Um, it's really fulfilling and to know that you're doing it and people are getting a benefit out of it and you're helping other people um, it's, it's it's a really good feeling to come away with at the end of the day. Yeah it sounds like something employers would really um, value as well the fact that you're, ev you're able to evidence that you're, you're taking your university learning and you're putting it into practice with, with yeah. an organisation. Yeah. Um, but also all the kind of personal benefits and also just the feelings of, of doing something good um, at GCU, I don't know if you you know much about the, the Common Good Award, but that's a kind of award yeah. that students can work towards that kind of recognises and rewards um, work that they're doing out, outside the curriculum mm -hmm. um, that's, mm -hmm. that's towards the common good. And I feel like you could have applied for it in, in the kind yeah. of work that you did. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's actually something that our student carers can work towards. Um, good, good. That we need to kind of do a bit more work to promote that to student carers, but that's uh -huh. um, one of the opportunities we have as well. But no, that's, that sounds like a really great... Um, Great show that you put on. I, I love it. I rummage in a charity shop. That's my favourite. It's I love um, it as well. So I was totally in my element. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good, good, ethical, sustainable fashion yeah. on a budget, and it's just fun as well. You never know what you're going to find. Absolutely, um, absolutely. And then I guess I was going to ask you a wee bit about the 
if you've noticed any kind of change from since the Going Higher Award and the Going Further Award has been introduced, do you feel that's kind of encouraged more students to kind of more carers, I mean, to take that step and maybe kind of go to college or go to university? I think or is it maybe so. too early to comment on that? I don't know. I think, um, I mean, in terms of an organisational aspect, um, since we're only just starting to work towards getting in touch with, you know, younger carers, maybe from our perspective, we still need a bit more time to see that. But from yeah. a personal perspective, I think absolutely. I mm. think um, even just recognising the struggles of student carers and how much mm. of a balancing act that, that is, um, is, in, is enough to, you know, give student carers the reassurance that the support is available for them. Um, I think being a student anyway is daunting, you know, go, going into, yeah. you've been, you know, you've been in school for that length of time and you're kind of going into mm. the big bad world. So to do that while you're also looking after somebody um, must be really scary. And I think um, yeah. to know that the institutions that you're going into are recognising your situation, you know, putting things in place to make it easier for you, putting the support available um, and things like the Go and Hire Award, I think, are, are just a perfect example of that and can only encourage more people to go to university and college. Um, and I think it's it's about one of the key things that our carer centre is about, you know, harvesting what the carer likes to do and, you know, that they get to keep, you know, that part of their life, you know, very mm -hmm. much alive. And I think that's so important for somebody that young as well to be able to say, well, this is what I want to study and this is what I want to be. And, you know, be encouraging that. I mean, as much as it's difficult at home and they have a lot on their plate, you know, putting the things in place that they can they can pursue those things. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think it's it can only be a benefit. Yeah, absolutely. I think for a lot, a lot of carers, obviously being a carer becomes a really big part of their identity. But I think it's really positive for them to have other aspects of their identity and coming to university is obviously a, a really positive step towards doing something they want to do yeah and I think the student carers I meet tend to really value that, that opportunity so yeah it's, yeah it's definitely good if we can help them to, to balance both and not have to choose one or the other yeah yeah no definitely definitely um so I suppose um it would be good to know about some of the support that's available at GCU for student carers um especially if we've got any carers um, who are looking to join university, it would be good to know what's available to them. If you want to talk a wee bit about yeah, that. Uh -huh. it's, it's always good if, if carers can get in touch with us before they before they come to the university. Mm -hmm. um, it can be difficult for us to know about um, student carers pre-entry um, because we, we don't always find out. There's not a box on the UCAS form that they tick at this stage. So it's good if they if they can get in touch with us, which is mm -hmm. sometimes difficult because they don't they don't know to do that. Um, which is unfortunate. It'd be good if we could have more pre-entry supports in place for them. We could invite them along to things like we have a um, mental health matters transitions event that might be that would be really beneficial for, for yeah, carers yeah. To, to come along to. We could even have more specific ones for carers. Um, as it is, once they do get in touch, we're able to kind of have a chat with them and find out about the kinds of difficulties they're having, um, find out about the course that they're doing and what, what barriers they might be, be coming up against. So um, it might be things like they don't want to go on placement that's really far from home or it might be that they've got an appointment at a specific time each week so they they would prefer to avoid being timetabled for a class at that time if possible mm -hmm. sometimes if it's yeah. maybe a seminar that runs a few times a week yeah, yeah there's things that we can do to just negotiate a bit of flexibility on their behalf so that they can balance their care and role with their studies yeah. so in a lot of cases we put together a kind of individualized carer support plan um, we don't go into a whole lot of detail about what they're, who they're caring for and what that caring role entails. That's kind of a confidential conversation between mm -hmm. myself and the student carer. Um, I feel that what their academic department needs to know is how their caring role might impact on their studies. So things like attendance might be impacted or concentration might sometimes be impacted if, they're, if they've got things in their mind and they're worried about somebody. Mm -hmm. And then we would, in the next section, we would look at what the department can do to, to help them to, to balance that. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a document that kind of goes back and forwards. Uh, the student carer agrees to what I've put in it, and then it goes on to the student's department so that they can be aware and, and put a wee bit of support in place. Yeah. I'm also available for student carers if they want someone to just check in with now and then. Um, I always offer to check in with them kind of now and then to see how they're getting on. Um, I'm kind of there to offer emotional and practical support and signposting to, to organisations like yours. 
Mm -hmm. um, also work quite closely with the, like, the student carer rep to make sure to kind of encourage um, peer support within the, the university. Um, so all different things and I guess trying to do a wee bit of awareness raising as well, recognising that a lot of people don't recognise what they're doing um, makes them a carer. So helping kind of make that more visible and um, encourage more people to come forward and, yeah. and seek support. Yeah, no, I was, absolutely, absolutely. And I think um, what you were saying about um, keeping their actual caring situation confidential is really important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's one of the things we stress here is your confidentiality is key. It doesn't go any further mm -hmm. than us. Um, mm -hmm. And really, if we're putting services in place for you, all they know is you're in a caring situation. It's never, mm -hmm. you know, they might need to know what the condition is, but they don't need to know the daily tasks that you're putting up with or anything like that. Um, so I think that's a really important element for student carers um, and might be one of the things that um, puts them off reaching out to people. So to know that mm -hmm. that's being kept as confidential as possible and it's not being shared with anyone who does, it's on a need to know basis really. Um, I think that's that's a really encouraging sign, definitely. Um, yeah. And we spoke about a wee bit about um, what we've been doing for Carers Week. So what about yourselves? What's what's Carers Week looked like for you? So we've had um, quite a lot of different events on. So we've recently, well, I think it was last year, we got the, the Carer Positive Award, the kind of initial engaged um, level of that. It comes in different levels depending mm -hmm. on, you know, what, what progress, progress you've made towards that. So we now kind of have... I've started to kind of formalise that and work with staff carers. So, so we did an event on Monday where we had um, somebody from the Carer Positive Scheme come along and kind of explain a wee bit about what that means and chat to staff carers about the scheme and, and how they can expect to be supported in the workplace. Yeah. So, um, so it's good that we've got that kind of whole institutional um, support in place. I think yeah. it really helps to kind of raise the visibility and kind of get everyone feeling included in that support. So, so we, did, we had the event on Monday. Alongside that, we did um, a podcast. So that's um, the Common Good podcast. Okay. And that was with our Equality and Diversity Officer and a staff carer um, talking about kind of our experience being a carer um, and the work that we're, we've been doing around supporting staff carers. We also, there was also a short video that came out um, with another staff carer talking about the, the support that she's had. From the university um, and I've had a chat with her student carer rep about kind of that role and you know what and the other work she's doing out, out with the university. Um, <laughs> what was the other thing we did? <laughs> uh, I also had a wee chat yesterday with some staff around their role in supporting student carers. Okay. So that was kind of um, it's good to have these conversations I think because yeah. you I guess sometimes you, you don't you don't realize other people's perspectives without having those conversations um, and it can be really helpful to sort of see see from different perspectives what, what other things you might be you might be doing to, to help kind of raise awareness across the institution so yeah. it's been it's been a busy it's been a busy week there's been lots <laughs> going on um maybe not as your, your events sound a lot nicer a lot more kind of fun <laughs> and, and social so that's um a, a good reason for carers to get involved with, with your organizations yeah. as well yeah. no I think um I know, but I think um, the things you're doing are really great. And I think even just the amount of attention that you are given to it and, um, you know, the the amount of planning that clearly goes into Carers Week for, on, on, you know, from your perspective, I think is really mm -hmm. fantastic. And again, a really encouraging sign for anybody who is maybe thinking about going to university or college or maybe, you know, they're looking after somebody but also have a child that's at university. You know, it's it's mm. really good to know that that's an important thing to you and it's um it's kind of part of your ethos. Um mm -hmm. and I think I think that's a it's it's a great thing to see people taking carers week so seriously and you know re helping to raise awareness and speaking to carers and you know getting their perspective on things I think you know and really taking the time to listen. I think is mm -hmm. you know, the most important thing. I think, you know, it's this year's um, theme is making care invisible and valued. And I think mm -hmm. that's exactly what, what you are doing. Um, I mm -hmm. think, it, it, you know, in spade loads, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really fantastic. Um, just on your, we touched on this a bit earlier on, but kind of in your own opinion, do you um, see any barriers of maybe coming to university or any challenges? Uh, yeah, I think it can be a really big step for a carer to, to make that commitment. Um, obviously, a caring role can be kind of the, the demands on a carer can fluctuate quite drastically. So even though things might be might feel OK at the time that you're making an application to university, you might be worried that 
in the course of three years, things could, could become more challenging for you. So it's, it can be quite difficult to make a, a commitment to a long, a long term plan like studying. I think, I think it can be quite daunting for a lot of people. Um, I think even just things like the time it takes to, to do an application for university, it, it's yeah. quite time consuming. And, and as we mentioned before, carers are quite limited in, in the time that they have to do these things. Uh, they can also be limited in terms of the, the location that they study. So while you know, someone without a caring role could be applying to universities all over the country or even further afield, um, mm -hmm. a carer might feel quite tied to where they live. They don't want to, to maybe leave that caring role or they might feel quite, quite guilty if they do. Um, so I think that kind of limits them again. So that's before they've even come to university. I think there's, there's those kind of barriers. Yeah. And then when they're studying, I suppose there's all, all the kind of daily things that might come up. There's, you know, just worrying all the time, having emergencies, having distractions in the home environment. It just, I think it just makes it that, that bit more difficult for them to really kind of get into the zone and engage with their work a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think engaging with the social aspect of university can be difficult as well. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe not having time to, to go on nights out or, or kind of get involved in that kind of thing. So I think mm -hmm. that's why it's important to have maybe something for, for student carers specifically to help them yeah. kind of uh, create a space for that, you know, within the kind of working day. Yeah. But yeah, I think in finances, I guess, is another big one. Um, I think, you know, I hope that in time, um, there's recognition that, that carers allowance shouldn't really stop because someone's studying because the caring role certainly doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's obviously something for policymakers to, to think about. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think finances are a huge barrier for, for carers coming to yeah. university as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, in terms of um, carers who are coming to university, what sort of things can they get involved in? What's available to them? So we men I mentioned briefly that, that we've got a student carer representative who sits within the student association. So she's started a, a student carer group. Um, I think the previous reps um, had a, were running a group as well. Um, now that she's in the role, um, I think because it's all been online this year, I think the group's mostly taken the form of a WhatsApp group. But she's mm -hmm. really hopeful that she'll get to meet the group in person and yeah. like tea and cakes and things soon. So fingers crossed that's that's something that we can work towards mm -hmm. um, and there's always scope for you know more than one carer to be in that that role as well because I think mm -hmm. particularly with carers as I mentioned their demands and their time can fluctuate their their course might become more intensive as well so it's good to, you know I think if there can be two people in that role that that's that's ideal particularly for carers um, but there's other things too I think I mentioned the common good award is something mm -hmm. carers can apply for so I need to do a wee bit of work thinking about how a carer could could use their experience to kind of um, evidence the, the sorts of things they're looking for in the Common Good Award, but I think there's probably there's loads of things that we can draw on. Um, I might come and ask you for help with that at some point. <laughs> um, and then I think I'm trying to think what else we have. Um, there's the the outreach team employ student mentors. I don't know if you heard about that when you were a student at GCU, mm -hmm. and they yeah. go out to they go out to colleges and to schools, and they kind of encourage. Um, young people to kind of come to think about coming to university so it's maybe mm -hmm. part of their kind of widening participation agenda and um, so it's really good if student carers apply for those roles because they might meet um, young carers out in schools and they can you know set a really good example be a good role model and say you know that they've managed to be a carer and come to university and it can be done and mm -hmm. um, so I think there's there's those opportunities as well student carers are particularly encouraged to, to apply for those roles and, and their skills there are, are recognized yeah. So that's good. That's an that's an opportunity to, to earn a bit of income as well. Yeah, you know, it's a well paid role and it's really flexible because the the, the, the university is the employer. So obviously we recognise that their their studies come first. So yeah. it wouldn't be it's not yeah. like in a, they're working in a bar and they're getting all this pressure to yeah. be coming to work when they've got an essay due the next day. Um, yeah, so there's lots of different things, and we're always keen to kind of link with what students are learning on their programmes as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned the link with kind of healthcare professionals and um, that's obviously a really relevant one it would be good for, for them to kind of just do more kind of awareness raising with them and make sure mm -hmm. when they're going out into their roles in healthcare and social care that they're aware of carers and they're able to identify them and know how to how to work with them yeah um, there's there's lots of other ways that we can link in with with different departments it was actually in the 
the staff session I was doing yesterday, even there's, there's even courses that you might not think of there being a clear link, but when you start talking yeah. to people in that course, they've got their own perspective on it. It was somebody from construction management, which All I would right. never have thought of a link, how you could get, but you started talking about um, kind of fire safety modules and how you might think mm. about designing, uh, designing buildings to make it, and keeping in mind somebody maybe with mobility problems and the carer mm -hmm. and making sure there's adequate space to be working around the person mm -hmm. and, and all those yeah. kinds of things. So, so yeah, I think there could be really clear links with, with lots of different subjects if we kind of yeah. use our imagination a wee bit. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, so lots of, lots and lots of different things and I'm, I'm sure there's more things we can we can think of as, as we go on. But Yeah, and I think um, just to touch on that, that final point there, I think... Um, that ties in really nicely with what I was saying earlier about um, how live projects and getting out and involved and being quite practical and hands on at the university ties in quite well with that. Um, and I mean, there's a real opportunity there to actually go and experience things like that. And um, I think I think that's great that people are finding the way to, you know, use mm -hmm. their experiences to influence their their studies as and vice versa. I think that's I think that's mm -hmm. a really nice link that's kind of been created there. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, so I understand you're involved in um, a working group who create the new Carer Aware Open University modules. Um, do you want to talk to me a bit about that? Uh, yeah, so that was the, the new, it's, I think Carer Aware at University modules are available through the Open University. So that's mm -hmm. uh, three modules that are available to anyone who wants to kind of increase their awareness of carers in a university setting. So I guess it was kind of aimed at staff, but students might also want to engage with it so that they've got a better awareness of, of their peers who might be in, in caring roles. Um, it begins quite basic around kind of identifying student carers and understanding what kind of things they might be doing and what kind of challenges they might face. And then it kind of gets a wee bit more in depth and looks at kind of reflecting on your own practice and thinking about what you and your role might be able to do to support a student carer. And it's all kind of framed around the voices of student carers. So there's lots of lots of video content um, with student carers speaking about their experiences. There were student carers involved in, in the working group as well. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it also builds on the research that was carried out by Carers Trust Scotland into the mm -hmm. student carer experience. Yeah. So that was a qualitative piece of research um, involving interviews with and focus groups as well with staff involved in supporting carers, academic staff, support staff and student carers themselves, of course, um, as well as I think carers organisations um, um, give some input into that. So it's, it's really good. It's a really kind of thorough piece of research that goes through the whole kind of student experience from application right through their studies and looking at the supports and what works. Um, and I think the carer aware modules and the, the, the research report really complement each other. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't take long to do either. Um, you can do them in your own time um, you can access them and come in and out of them and just do wee bits. So it's something I would definitely encourage anybody in a university environment yeah. to, to do if, if they're likely to come into contact with student carers yeah, in any absolutely. way. Um, definitely absolutely. Worth doing. Yeah, that's no, that's wonderful. Um, and I think um, it's always good to use the real life experiences to influence something like that. So speaking to staff and carers themselves, I think I think I think it's a brilliant way to influence those sort of things. And you know, it's not just about the numbers at the end of the day. It's about you know these real life stories and experiences. And I think that's a really good way to to set that up. You know, mm -hmm. um. So what would you say are the next steps for the university? What's next for you guys? Uh, I think continuing the work that we're already doing and keeping, you know, having those conversations. I think the more people we can bring into the conversation and the more links we can have with kind of individual departments and mm -hmm. working together on ways that, you know, we spoke a wee bit about embedding carer awareness into the curriculum where possible. Mm -hmm. um, and also just having more regular reminders about the supports available at the university. Um, I'm really looking forward to that tick box being on UCAS. That would be that, that would be good. So <laughs> yeah. that we can build on our kind of pre-entry supports. Um, but yeah, just those things really kind of working on that whole institutional approach, um, keeping on, you know, supporting our staff carers and our student carers and trying to make the university as welcoming and inclusive of carers as we can. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's and from a carers organization point of view, it's um it's really lovely to hear that. And I think um you know, we are more than happy to provide any sort of support or advice that you need. Um, yeah. And it's it's worth noting to any um, student carers who might be watching this, 
Um, if you are looking to reach out to a local carer centre or a carer's organisation, um, it's normally the one that the, um, that's based in a local authority that the cared for lives in. Um, so while you might be a resident of Western Bartonshire, but you're looking after somebody who's in Annie's land, it would actually be a different carer centre. Um, just in terms of fin finances, it would be the local authority that they live in that deal with that. Um, but across the board, carer centres tend to offer um, very similar types of support, um, especially in all the same areas, you know, finances, emotional support, um, support groups, putting you in touch with people that might be of use, you know, services, that sort of thing. Um, so whatever carer centre you go to or um, is your closest one, um, you'll, you'll definitely find support there. So I think there's a really lovely link between you know, being in university and having that support and what support's available when they're not in the classroom. I think there's a there's a real opportunity for student carers to just have continued support throughout their whole journey um, with no gaps. I think that's really great. Yeah. 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 And I think that's, that's really useful to clarify that about where, where they would access support, because I think that's that can, you know, be something people aren't very sure about. So that's thanks for, for clarifying that. That's really no, useful. No. No, it's fine. It's um, it's it can be quite a complicated thing for people. Um, mm. it's just in terms of legislation. Um, because it's dealing with finances. Really, if you were applying for something like a benefit or a grant, um, or something that was supporting the cared for, it would really need to be a carer centre that's in their local authority. Um, mm -hmm. for things like emotional support and you know support to yourself, you know joining support groups and things like that. It's it's really those things don't necessarily apply to that rule, but. Um, it tends to be when it's things like benefits and grants and you know things that need to be processed by the, the local authority and um, that yeah. would that would be when it would that would need to be considered um, but for anybody who is looking after somebody in Western Bartonshire um, you know it can be a family member it can be a friend a neighbour um, mm -hmm. and it's regardless of their condition um, you are more than welcome to get in contact with us um, if it's just that because you've got more questions or because what you've heard today is um, of benefit to you and you think we could be we could be of some support um, our contact details are on our website which is www.carerswd.org um, or you can give us a phone on 0141 941 1550 our office is currently shut at the moment we're all working from home but if you phone that number it'll give you instructions of how to get in contact with us um, and we're also on social media you're just looking for carers of West Dunn. Yep, and we're on social media too at GCU Wellbeing. And I always just type GCU Wellbeing into Google to get our um, web pages up. And we've also our um, GCU carers. I search it on Google all the time. So I can put the link into emails I'm sending and, and it comes up if you if you type that. So um, I always find that less of a, a mouthful than reading yeah. out a, a web address. But, um, but yeah, no, it's been really nice chatting to you today. It's good yeah. to hear about all the different things you're doing. And I, and I really look forward to you know working in partnership more with you know, your organisation and other carers' organisations in future. I think there's lots of great opportunities there. You know, you obviously we, we can learn a lot from what you're doing, um, linking in with the great activities that you've already got up and running. And also hopefully, you know, having links with us might help you to, to reach more um, young adult carers yeah. um, and carers generally. Obviously, we have um, student carers of all ages at, at the university. Um, and you're very welcome to, to pop in and we've had carers organisations set up stalls and things to try and kind of just catch people on their way past and, and start those conversations and I think that's been that's yeah. been really successful in the past yeah no no yeah, likewise it's, more of that. no likewise it's been a great conversation and I think um like as you say you know the feelings mature if there's ever any you know support or advice we can offer we're more than happy to offer it um, and I think having a continued partnership with yourselves would be really beneficial for both of us and of course for student for student carers of any age who are who are looking to pursue higher education I think definitely we are we are more than welcome to come to either of us <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah feel free to get in touch yeah, yeah absolutely and um, hopefully speak to you soon yes and enjoy the rest of carers week yes you too <laughs> see you later everybody Okay, bye. <laughs>